This is the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Let's unbox it. What boring unpackings have become today. Even the developers have stopped putting some paperwork. Phone, a couple of pages and a charging cable. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is, as you can imagine, the new Galaxy Note. The same shape, support for the S Pen, by the way, it hides in the body now. You can also click with the stylus and piss everyone off. The phone is expensive and you can feel it. I even like this black color, although I'm not a fan of black phones at all. But there is such a coating that it hardly picks up fingerprints. But in the area of the camera, due to electrostatics, a lot of dust and lean is collected and it does not look very nice. Definitely my favorite color is still white. For the design and materials I gave this phone a solid 5. Its unique style, perfect assembly, excellent materials, everything is wonderful. Yes, someone does not like this design. For someone, the previous generation looked brighter, but personally I like the new look more. By the way, the phone is 1.2mm thicker than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but the rounded corners make it feel thinner, no matter how you hold it. In general, it lies perfectly in the hand, despite the angularity. Comparing the Galaxy S22 Ultra to the iPhone 13 Pro Max is inevitable. Last Samsung said that this phone is a cut above, but they are rivals, both in price and positioning. Samsung does give more options in some areas. An additional camera with 10x zoom, a stylus, a brighter screen, but there are also things that are little worse in this phone. For example, I like the speakers on the S22 Ultra less than on iPhone. They have less volume, more highs, and they are not as pleasant. By the way, I also like the microphones in the iPhone 13 Pro Max more. The sound is more voluminous and clearer. And in the Galaxy S22 Ultra it feels like the voice is a little squeezed, as if the upper and lower frequencies are cut off. The second thing where the S22 Ultra falls short of the new iPhone is battery life. During the couple weeks of the test, I averaged about 5 hours of screen work. The phone is enough for a day, but I want more. It's slightly better than the S21 Ultra in terms of autonomy, but still inferior to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Charging speed from 0 to 100% is about 1 hour. With wireless charging, the smartphone takes a long time to charge, because the maximum power here is 15 watts. In addition, there is also reverse charging and 4.5 watts. The most noticeable and literally bright innovation is the screen with a peak brightness of 1750 nits. On a sunny day, the S22 Ultra's screen is noticeably brighter than the iPhone 13 Pro Max and can be used under direct sunlight. The resolution of the screen is 1440p that is higher than Full HD, 3088 by 1440 pixels made using LTPO technology which gives it the ability to change the refresh rate from 1 to 120Hz. The screen is fast when you're browsing or playing games and almost static when you're reading. What else is interesting in this screen? It supports the S Pen. It doesn't just support like last year's smartphone. The stylus now fits into the body and you won't have to buy it separately. The S Pen has slowed down to response time. It feels like you are not writing with a stylus, but with a real pencil. It's really handy for taking notes. The capabilities of the S Pen are exactly the same as in Galaxy Note smartphones. Notes on the locked screen, player control, you can draw, take screenshots and write to them. In general, the thing is convenient, especially for those who are used the Galaxy Note smartphones. Of course, the S22 Ultra has IP68 water and dust resistance. It is protected on all sides by Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, a new generation of tempered glass. Corning has not yet officially introduced it, but the Samsung claims that it has become 12% more durable. And the protection is actually good, and this is important, because you want to care the phone without a case.
The Galaxy S22 series are the first smartphones based on the Exynos 2200 processor. And this, let me remind you, is the long-awaited 4 nanometer Samsung chip with GPU from AMD. It feels like a very fast smartphone. It is stable on the system and in games, but let's look at the benchmarks. The increase in synthetic performance of the S22 Ultra Always predecessor is about 15%. In stress tests it heats up much less and, as a result, less throttling. It means that it behaves better in games when you play 2-3 hours in a row. Well, in Genshin Impact, for example, everything is not bad. There are no frank slowdowns, although they happen. I haven't seen a phone yet that pulls Genshin perfectly. The performance of the smartphone is ok, but we tested the version of 12GB of RAM. It is possible that the base smartphone will have slightly different performance. S22 Ultra is probably now the main Android flagship. No matter what anyone says, this is the main antagonist for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. They will be compared a lot, including the camera. And I can tell you that the Galaxy S22 Ultra is a more versatile solution. The main camera gives us the opportunity to shoot at both 12 and 108 megapixel, but more often we will shoot at 12 megapixel. And here I can tell you, the camera is about the same as the S21 Ultra. I would even say that this is exactly the same camera. It shoots great during the day, it shoots well in the evening, but it is slightly inferior in aperture ratio to the main camera of the iPhone 13 Pro Max, which requires more ISO and a little, just a little bit details is lost. When shooting portraits, I would say that everything is amateur because the S22 Ultra has very bright colors, the skin turns out to be saturated and the extra sharpness make it looks a little older. On the iPhone, portraits are softer, but with less contrast. The real magic at the Samsung begins where you need a zoom camera. There's a two zoom cameras, 3x and the 10x zoom. It's super convenient. You can choose focal length and shoot the way you want without losing quality. On vacation when I had an iPhone 13 and Pixel 6 with me, I really missed the 10x zoom. I had to crop the picture a little to get what I want. But here is what pisses me off in both the S22 Ultra and the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Their telephoto cameras are quite dark. And as soon as the light is a little less than necessary, they shoot with the main camera and just use the digital zoom. The photos are terrible, but the S22 Ultra solved the problem easily. You need to start the manual shooting mode and the camera will not automatically switch to the main model. Well, the ultra weight angle camera. It is less fast than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, but it is also good and you can also take micro shots and even a kind of micro video. The only thing that I don't like about the Samsung camera app is the lens switching. When you shoot with one hand, instead of step-by-step -step switching, the exposure is constantly activated and the smooth switching scale starts, which is a little annoying. Samsung S22 Ultra is able to shoot video well. It has good stabilization, excellent picture quality, it can shoot in HDR and even 8K. But the iPhone is still the best when it comes to video. The camera of the S22 Ultra is not much different from the previous generation, but still the S22 Ultra has a very good camera and is the most versatile solution, especially if you look to shoot and travel. What's with the front camera? And it is the same as the S21 Ultra. A good 40 megapixel camera with 26mm lens and f2.2 aperture. Shoots well, knows how to take portraits and, in general, a good front camera. The S22 Ultra runs on Android 12 and the One UI 4.1. There's a lot going on from pure Android 12, but visually Samsung still has its own style. And while I like pure Android better, the S22 Ultra is much more stable, smoother and better than the same Pixel 6. Smartphone optimization, even out of the box, is better than a Pixel 6 many months after its release. The Galaxy S22 Ultra has support for all modern networks, Wi-Fi 6E, 5G, Bluetooth 5.2, everything that you would like to see in a real modern flagship is here. And most importantly, it all works. 
The Galaxy S22 Ultra has a good set of cameras, one of the best displays, but they are also weaknesses. They are not the best speakers and autonomy inferior to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Is it a good smartphone? I will say that is very good. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is without a doubt one of the best smartphones on the market right now. Should I change S21 Ultra to it? Definitely not. Should you upgrade from the Note 20 Ultra? Then again, if you're happy with everything, then no.